You've undoubtedly heard of transgenderism, but have you heard of transhumanism? In this episode, we'll be discussing about the plot to dehumanize humanity. I'm Paul Dragu, and this is Freedom is the Cure. So Alex Newman is a longtime award-winning investigative reporter and a senior editor at The New American. He recently finished a reporting series on transhumanism, a critical, unreported topic we should all know about and be concerned. So I'm going to be talking to Alex about it. Hey, Alex. Hey, how's it going, Paul? Thanks for joining me, man. Thanks for having me. Great to be with you. So as I said, you finished this report. I I think it was a five-part video report that you did on transhumanism. what is transhumanism? Well, it's a lot of things. It's a political movement. It's an ideology. Um, I believe it is a diabolical scheme, um, assault on humanity, almost, if you will, assault on what it means to be human. Um, it's an assault on everything that is good and right and true. And it's being uh, perpetrated on humanity, this massive fraud, by some of the most powerful people on planet Earth. And right now it hasn't really been talked about much publicly, but that's going to change in the years ahead. You'll start hearing much more. You may not hear the term transhumanism, but you'll see the things that we're going to be talking about today popping up all over. You'll see the the promotion of this in the entertainment system. You'll see your children being uh, acclimated to accept it in public schools. And uh, it's, it's an absolutely critical topic, Paul. It may be, you know, one of those issues to end all issues. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, what are some of the terms we'd be looking at? Like, how do we spot it? And I, then I want to do, I do want to go back and then, and I, I guess there's two, there's always two stories to every story, right? You know, and then I want to touch on that. But what are some of the terms? What are we looking at? How would people be able to spot it that maybe they don't otherwise wouldn't know? Well, there's a lot of sneaky terminology going around. Uh, One of the terms that we hear frequently is human augmentation. We're just going to augment you. We're just going to improve you. It'll be like Paul Dragu, but the new and improved Paul Dragu, because you'll be smarter and faster and uh, more loving and more kind, uh, is how Ray Kurzweil, the chief of engineering at Google, describes it. Uh, He says it's going to make us more godlike, and uh, that's a common theme with these people. Uh, they, They talk about it as the upgrading of the human being. Uh, We're going to be uh, improving our genetics, either through genetic engineering or through, uh, you know, the eugenicists used to be really big on selective breeding and and, uh, population control, things like this, kind of like you do with cattle. Um, Another one of the really serious frontiers in this is the use of technology beyond just external technology, like your iPhone, right? They they kind of paint the uh, internal technological devices as just the next step past your your smartphones and so I think we're going to see a lot of that they're talking about now wearables and you can have you know your your Apple watch and you can have your special yeah. Facebook glasses and all this but uh, the next step is to really include these technology components as actually a part of the human being inside of your body and that's happening now already um in terms of the putting microchips in people's hands that'll carry their vaccine passports. Ask, yeah, I was going to ask you about is that part of it? Because I, you know, if you grew up in the same like some of the same religious circles, I, I may have. Do you remember back in the day where they would say they would put a chip in you, and you know, and then we grew up and we maybe we thought it was crazy, but this has been happening, right? And this is happening. It is happening right now. In fact, it's not new. It's been happening for uh, at least a decade, very publicly. Uh, they've been promoting it on the the fake media networks as various different things some of them will say that it's it's going to be good for your health because then all your health records will be right there on that convenient yeah, microchip yeah. in your hand or it's going to be good for safety apparently it's going to keep you safe from terrorism uh now it's going to help you uh be able to go do your shopping without having to carry a physical vaccine passport yeah. and the next frontier and there the technology is already in place to do this it's actually already operational in certain places especially in scandinavia is uh the elimination of cash and the the moving all that into digital payments starting with your your smartphone and then ultimately in your microchip which again is already happening now this is not some futuristic scenario uh, it is taking place as we speak and that trend i think is going to become much more widespread in the years ahead so what's their main uh their main push for what's their main sell is it is it health i mean i read a little bit about it and i saw your reports but 
is is that what the cell is? Is is that we can be smarter, bigger, faster, stronger, smarter, uh, healthier? You know, live hundreds of years. That seems to be a major uh, point and selling point for them. It absolutely is. You know, you, you need to market this using things that'll be appealing to a normal person. And so, uh, one of the things that I think is very appealing to people is the ability to communicate with the technology without actually carrying it. So we see right now, for example, Elon Musk is developing what he calls the Neuralink, which uh, they, they've already developed this. It's already been tested on animals. They're looking for human volunteers as we speak, where they actually saw out a piece of your skull and replace that piece of skull with a microchip, which is then wired into your brain. And uh, as Elon Musk explains, it doesn't just read your thoughts and figure out what your brain is thinking and doing. It also has the ability to write on the brain, which I think uh, opens up a whole new frontier. And again, this technology is what exists publicly now. Uh, it would be incredibly naive for us to assume that the most advanced technology is what's now being shown to the public. That's ludicrous. Uh, we know that DARPA and the Communist Chinese have been working on these sorts of technologies for many, many years. Uh, I'm sure they're far more advanced than anything that's being shown to us publicly now. And they're, they're making it, they're, there's kind of, I think, two pushes. One of the pushes is, hey, this is going to make you better. You're still going to be you, but you're going to be smarter. You'll be able to use the cloud to process uh, very complex equations to access all the accumulated information that mankind has ever developed um, just with a thought. And so that sounds very appealing to a lot of people. Then there's also the fear-based side of it. Yuval Noah Harari, a homosexual activist, a professor in Israel, uh, he's, I, I would call him the lead stenographer for this movement. He's very close to the World Economic Forum. His mm -hmm. books are being promoted by Angela Merkel and Barack Obama. And, um, he's he, spoken at Davos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Multiple times. He's uh, intimately connected with that whole no. crowd. And um, he, he speaks very clearly about uh, it, it, that in his view, uh, humanity is going to basically cease to exist. Uh, he described it in one speech as uh, Homo sapiens is not going to exist anymore, not because the robots are going to kill us, but because uh, we're going to have upgraded ourselves and we're going to become an entirely new type of creature. Um, he actually called it, his book is called Homo Deus, which uh, instead of Homo sapiens will be God man, yeah. right? Uh, which, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is just more evidence that this is literally a diabolical plot. It's the, the exact same lie that Satan used in the garden. Oh, you know, you just you could be like God if you just yeah. <laughs> eat this fruit. It never ends, huh? No, it never. It's the same lie over and over again, just slightly repackaged. Now you could be like God if you insert microchips in your brain. Before you could be like God if you just eat the fruit. It's I, I want to go back to that, but uh, I've read most of He He also wrote a book called, I believe, 24. 21 lessons for the 21st century and in it i believe that's where maybe it's a speech from davos he talks about the dangers of this as well you're right he's a huge huge proponent but one of the dangers he mentions is that we could be hackable is it hackable beings is that the so so let's talk yeah let's can you discuss like because obviously that's a large that's mostly i would say the focus or a large focus of your reporting is that this this can be terribly terribly dangerous uh, so how how what are some of the you know we discussed their selling point but what what's your take on the dangers of, of this movement of what they'll be pitching and what they're working on uh, well the dangers are massive and uh, you all know a Harari. Um, he does speak on the dangers, but I think there's even an ulterior motive there. Uh, he actually just recently did an interview with an, another homosexual, uh, Anderson Cooper, uh, formerly of the Clown News Network. Now he's with, I think, 60 Minutes. I forget which one of the fake news networks that's on. Did he move uh, on? I had no idea. Well, at least he was doing the interview for 60 Minutes, yeah. And uh, so he interviews uh, this Harari character. And Harari says, oh, yeah, there's lots of dangers. And, and then right, you know, without taking a breath, it goes right into, well, we could solve those dangers if we just had global regulation. <laughs> How convenient. We need a world government to deal with yeah. the dangers of the insane ideas that you lunatics are marketing. Um, and so we, we very often see that with globalists, right? They, they create this massive danger, this massive threat, and then they terrorize us with it. And mm -hmm. they say, oh, but, you know, we could always solve that if you just let us have a world government, if you just give up some more of your freedom, right? That would then we could deal with this threat yeah. that we created. Uh, and that's the same case with this. Um, you actually see that clearly, e even in the beginning of the marketing of this, um, the head of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, I call him Dr. Evil, um, before he was promoting this publicly, he was promoting the idea of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which is kind of their transhumanist agenda of 
marketing slogan um, in an article for the Council on Foreign Relations publication, Foreign Affairs. And I, I think you know viewers of this program are very familiar with the CFR. And he, he frames it as, well, we have a choice, right? The transhumanism is inevitable, but now we have a choice. We can either allow this technology to turn us into soulless robots, <laughs> right? Um, which, okay, that, that, that sounds like fun. Kind of like you could be like Klaus Schwab or, or uh, what's the little fascist who runs Facebook? Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Exactly. You know, he looks like robot. a robot. He does. Right? Gee whiz. He could be well, a soulless robot. Or, he says, yeah, right? We, we could use this technology. He says, uh, we, we, we will be forced to come up with a new ethical and moral paradigm. Mm. So we got we got to ditch all that old fashioned morality, all the you know, 10 commandments and stuff. That that's all in the past. So those those are the choices, right? You either come up with this whole new ethical moral system of values or you become a, a soulless robot. It's like, "Oh, that sounds like a nice choice." <laughs> right? <laughs> Could there be a third choice? Like maybe we're not going to participate in your insane transhumanist agenda. I think that would be uh, the ideal choice, but there are clearly dangers, and I think um, one of the big dangers is just the the stripping of our humanity. Right? At, at what point do we stop being human? Is it when your genes have been edited by these lunatics? And Bill Gates is very active in promoting this. In fact, they're very open about their agenda to genetically engineer the human being. It's already happening. Governments are doing it in China. Even the French government is working on this. Um, very, very terrifying. Yeah, as if God didn't know what he was doing when he wrote our genetic code. We got to trust Bill Gates to right. improve it for us. It's it's, it's insane. Um, and then you know, on the other side, the the technology and the technological implant side. You know, at what point uh, do do you cease to be human when your thought process has been fused with artificial intelligence, with computers, with uh, quantum computing systems? Um, and I think it's very dangerous. I think it it, it really. You all know Harari put it well. He said, "You know, humans may cease to exist," and and I'm not comfortable with that. I, I mean, talk about high stakes, right? The, right? Literally, the end of our species. It's uh, it's an insane idea. I don't think they're going to be en- end up getting away with it. But they're dead serious. They've got all kinds of power, all kinds of money. They control mm-hmm. the the levers of government, media, etc. And uh, they are hell bent on pushing this on us. Is there any connection between this transhuman agenda and you mentioned Klaus Schwab and uh, the World Economic Forum. Is there any connection between that and the Great Reset? Absolutely. In fact, Klaus Schwab himself says that the Fourth Industrial Revolution is a critical component of the Great Reset. And if you look at what he means by Fourth Industrial Revolution, he's frankly been pretty transparent. He, he figures that most of the proletariat, if you will, will not be reading his books, will not be listening to his lame speeches at the World Economic Forum. Um, and, and I think he's probably correct in that assumption. But uh, he, he describes it as the fusion of our physical and our biological and our digital identities. And talking about literally, I mean, that's a perfect way to encapsulate what transhumanism is. It's the fusion of our biological selves with the digital world. And um, that is, first of all, terrifying. It's insane. And the potential for mischief, right? If these were decent, nice (laughs) human beings, I would say that's still crazy. But look at these people. They're psychopaths. They're lunatics. They want to strip us of our freedom. I mean, Klaus Schwab's organization has been very transparent. Right. You know, by 2030, you'll have nothing. You'll own you'll nothing, own but and you'll, you'll be love happy. It. Right? And we're going to send a billion refugees to your countries and aliens. I mean, all, all this ridiculous stuff. And we can see what they're doing with the Great Reset. They, they're talking about building a totalitarian, one-world technocratic system. Very transparently. Again, they're, they're not even like using the code terms anymore. They're no, just no, kind of no. coming out of the woodwork. They don't even care it. anymore. No. Well, I think it started with, for instance, when uh, Agenda 21 came out, and then in 2030, and it's like a 40-page document, and this is written by you know people involved with the United Nations, which I think most people would say it's, it's an intergovernmental agency that should be taken seriously. And they have these goals with all these sub goals, and anyone who's read it, you can see it's total totalitarian control. The people who are working with these uh, powerful agencies and pushing these. Make no secret that the answer or their answer is totalitarian one world control. It's not. It's insane. And it's like you, you've been reporting on it. and But it's not in major media. It's not taken very seriously. I mean, I did manage to find a report in Forbes on transhumanism, and it went through several points and whatnot. But uh, you had mentioned Klaus Schwab. Um, who else are some of the crazy, you know, power-hungry people and agencies you know, making this thing go. Well, the 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 behind the scenes forces are massive. Um, the front men, we've talked about some of them. 
Uh, Ray Kurzweil, chief of engineering at Google, one of the leading guys. Uh, Nicolas Bostrom, a Swedish you know, philosopher uh, who, who teaches in the United Kingdom, uh, is another one of the key front men. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari, another one of the key front men. Um, and so, so these are the people, and, and even Klaus Schwab. I would say, really, as a front man, they they would not put uh, you know the true brain trust on television for us to be able to identify them. But when you look, you know, who is behind all of these movements, you'll find a number of names that ke- and and institutions that keep popping up over and over and over again. I think Bill Gates is uh, clearly one of the leading individuals, and, and honestly, I don't think Bill Gates is his own man either. Uh, I think Bill Gates, uh, he, he comes from a long line of eugenicists. His his dad, of course, was on the board of Planned Parenthood. Um, so I, I think Bill Gates was groomed and put into that position. I think Mark Zuckerberg with his uh, meta, right? They're, they're trying to create the metaverse, this artificial reality where we're all expected to live, work, play, interact with fellow humans. I mean, it, it's crazy. So these are the key people uh, on the surface. But when you look behind the scenes, uh, the Rockefeller uh, foundations with an S uh, are absolutely instrumental to this. Uh, governments are critical, the United Nations. Um, and a lot of the money is coming from these shadowy, subversive foundations to promote this. And uh, they've got, a, unfortunately, a lot of business power behind them as well. I mean, Google is one of the most powerful companies in the world, if not the most powerful company in the world. And they are at the forefront of this. And just behind the big tech company facade, there are other actors, too. And they, and they don't get mentioned enough. One of the obvious ones is Incutel. Right, uh, many of these big tech companies were were stood up by the intelligence community through InQtel, which is officially the investment arm of the American intelligence community. People don't see that relationship, but it's there. A lot of them got their initial funding through InQtel or through key people involved with InQtel, board members, things like that. People like Michael Crow uh, at Arizona State University have been absolutely critical to all this. And yet you very rarely see them in public. You very rarely hear them in public. You get the front men. And, um, and, and I think ultimately when we talk about who's behind this, yeah, you have the deep state. You've got the deep state behind the deep state. I mean, the CFR, Bilderberg, all these weirdo secret societies like the Bohemian Grove and the Skull and Bones. But then ultimately even behind that, I think the answer is real simple. It's diabolical. It's satanic. Well, yeah, you had mentioned earlier about, the I guess, the, the, the chip in the, brain, in the pig's brain and whatnot. And I'd read something to the effect, something like that. And I, want, I don't know if it's similar is where – I don't know if it was Elon Musk or whoever, they were, they were figuring out they were using animals to map out the brain. And then you mentioned that upload to the cloud. So it seems like their goal is to live, like, is this a way they can think they can live forever? And, and do they think that we're so materialistic to where they, uh, if they upload their, their memories and their thought patterns, then they are that being and they can, is that part of the, the goal here? I think that's going to be one of the selling points for the dumbed down masses. They're going to tell them that, hey, you can live forever. All you got to do is just hook yourself up to this Borg. Uh, and we see this pretty clearly uh, in terms of the propaganda, right? The BBC put out a show called Years and Years, uh, aimed at young people. And it's the, the star of the show is this young girl, and her parents are portrayed as like these you know, old-fashioned buffoons who just don't understand how great the transhumanism is going to be. Um, and there's a scene in there where she tells her parents, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trans. And her parents are like, oh, that's okay, honey. We still love you. She's like, no, I'm not transgender. I'm going to be a transhuman. I'm, I'm going to go to this facility in Switzerland, and they're going to upload my brain and my consciousness to the cloud, and I'm going to exist forever as data. And then they're going to turn my body into, I think she says, like fertilizer for crops or something <laughs> like that, right? Um, and, and, you know, you're, you're looking at that thinking, that's crazy. But young kids are going to look at that and think, oh, wow. That sounds kind of cool. And so I think that's going to be a big selling point for these people is, you know, they, they've completely severed people's uh, uh, connection with God through right. 12 or 13 years of government indoctrination and then the propaganda machine. And just, you know, it, it's it's all designed to separate the individual from, uh, from God himself. And then what happens? Well, we realize, oh, my goodness, we're mortal and something's going to happen after we die. Hey, wouldn't it be nice to just upload our consciousness to this cloud thing. And whether the people leading this actually believe that that's going to be possible or feasible, I don't know. I think certainly people like Ray Kurzweil believe that. Uh, I think some of these people are so terrified of death that they're looking for any possible way to live forever without God, and that's going to fail. But at the highest levels, I'm not convinced that these people believe that. I think it's just may very well be a marketing point to get 
dumb young people to be willing to have their brains uploaded and then have their bodies turned into fertilizer. What a terrible way to, to look at existence. You know, <laughs> you and I, you know, we're, we're Christians. And so I get up and I have a sense of purpose. And I think we both have a sense of understanding of how the world works. And we have, we understand the dynamic that there's a struggle between good and evil and whatnot. But to perhaps grow up in in a world where you don't have that basis and then you're given this it seems like it seems terribly sad um in my introduction i had mentioned uh transgender you know this this uh it, what is it it's a it's an invention of course it's a cultural societal invention it doesn't exist but is there a link between tr the transgender phenomenon that we all know of now and this uh, there absolutely is <clears throat> um, in fact i don't think any of these things can be understood in isolation. I think at its core, all of these represent an assault on God and the truth and, um, and the moral systems that God has put in place. And you see this pattern. I mean, Karl Marx, I think, was, was really just one of the most obvious. Everything he advocated was an exact and total repudiation of what God taught. So God ordained private property. They say we should steal everything from everyone and, and then redistribute it. Uh, God ordained family. God ordained a husband and a wife should bring children into the world and so on. Uh, so Marx said we got to abolish the family. Right? So all of it is a repudiation of that. And I think transgenderism was kind of a, a next logical step. God created the male and female. And in, in Romans 1, we, we learn that uh, you know, God has made certain things plain to people just from the nature of creation. You don't have to study your Bible to understand that God made us male and female and that there's a, a specific design there that the man belongs with the woman and that together they can procreate and bring children. So, so this, you don't even have to be a Bible scholar to recognize all this. Well, transgenderism aims to blur and ultimately destroy that really self-evident truth that there is male, that there is female, and that the, the world was designed with that in mind. And, and similarly, I think transhumanism is just the next great leap forward, to borrow a term from the mass murdering communist Chinese, in this diabolical agenda. So humans are created in the image of God, is what the Bible teaches. And uh, if you can convince humans that they're defective in some way, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a, a, sub, a subpar human if you don't upgrade yourself with these technological implants or if you don't upgrade your children through the modern uh, miracle of genetic engineering, then you're, you're some sort of uh, less than and, um, and And that, of course, is a diabolical agenda. If we're made in the image of God and we're being told that you know, there's something defective in us, but that Bill Gates and the Rockefellers and the Klaus Schwabs of the world can can fix us. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, then who becomes God? Who becomes our savior and our provider? Um, I, I think it has to be understood in that diabolical sense, and then from that will flow all of these evils. Uh, you know, the fruit of that, just like the fruit of transgenderism, is broken hearts, broken minds, broken bodies, uh, chaos, confusion, destruction. Yeah. Uh, transhumanism will be the same thing. Wow. <laughs> is that why we have seen such, uh, it seems like it's been really ramped up, the trans. I think a lot of people are looking around and they're like, what the heck? Where did this come from? I mean, just in the last two years, you know, anyone who dares to say, well, that doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, science, biology makes it plain. And there seems to be so much power behind this. Oh, no, 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 you can't say that. <laughs> uh, you know, the craziest thing to me is that perhaps behavioral therapists or uh, the psychological field, and of course, doctors and all, that they're not coming up and saying, no, 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 this is obviously crazy. Science had made this clear like long, long ago. Like, you know, we have a lot of progress to make in other areas of life, but this obviously is a regression They've obviously, is, has there been some uh, money and force put into the transgender uh, facade to push this, to push us, to get us ready for, and I guess we're not ready for transhumanism because nobody's talking about, everyone's talking about transgenderism. Yeah, they're, they're using a process that's been tried and tested and proven successful many times over recent generations. And uh, this was very well calculated. This was very well orchestrated. And uh, what you know, doctors 
almost to a man, to a woman, recognize that this is absurd, right? They recognize that you can't actually be a woman trapped in a man's body, mm-hmm. right? I, I mean, anybody, a, a child, a, a kindergarten child could understand that if they weren't being relentlessly brainwashed in a government brainwash camp masquerading as a school. Uh, it's just, it's self-evident. It's so obvious. And yet they have terrorized and terrified these doctors to the point where many of them are scared to speak out because they know they're going to be called nasty names by the fake media. They know that they may even even be investigated, right? We see this with the COVID thing. You have you have thousands of doctors who understand that this is total madness, but they're worried because they've seen what's happened to other doctors who've spoken out. They've lost their licenses. They've been investigated. Uh, the one doctor in Maine was subjected to a psyche, a mandatory psychiatric evaluation. So. Um, because this of, is the same way they keep people in line in every field. Uh, the teachers, the, the university professors, the, um, the journalists, right? It's, it's a combination of carrots and sticks. You know, you know if you want the carrot of your paycheck and all the rest of it, you'll behave. And you know that there's also a stick waiting where if you deviate from what you're being told is the new normal, to borrow a quote from the Great Reset lunatics, uh, then you will be beaten mercilessly with that stick until you submit and you may lose everything. It's amazing. It's amazing that, for instance, COVID, I think, is a good example of here at the New American, we were saying from the very beginning, first of all, lockdowns weren't going to work. Vaccines were shown to have some some aspect of harm to it. Uh, people were dropping dead and whatnot. And then uh, face, uh, face masks, you know, we weren't about cloth. And then all of that is now becoming somewhat mainstream. We know it by, for instance, now they're saying, where you can get your N95? And they're essentially saying the other ones, they, did, they didn't work. We know they didn't work. And of course, Johns Hopkins just came out with a study saying lockdowns not only didn't work, but they caused enormous harm. They use the word enormous and, and all these things. And it's like, at what point we're so connected, yet we, it seems like truth has been coward. And it's, 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 in, it's, in, it's crazy, isn't it? How can this be? How, uh, how can, uh, how can the propaganda be so strong to, to shut? For instance, again, we're talking about doctors who know, and everyone else knows biologically there is no transgender. It's a, it's a social construct, and for them not to speak out and not to push, um, gee whiz, man, I don't know. Is there an answer? Like you know, people watching and listening, this seems like how in the world do you push back against this? What do you do? What what can listeners and viewers do to push back and and ensure a world that's not insane as it as it seems to be going (laughs) well i I think one of the first and most important things is to stop being scared um the the masters of the propaganda the masters of the psychological terrorism and warfare that's been deployed against the american people understand very clearly that fear is an incredibly powerful weapon so they want you to be in fear of covid they want you to be in fear of social ostracism they want you to be in fear that someone's going to call you a dirty name or a nasty name like racist like homophobe like islamophobe like um luddite you know pick pick your term the, the standard terms that they throw out there um, and so I think to begin with, we have to stop being scared. Um, it's, it's just, I can't emphasize how critical that is. Uh, another key thing that people need to do is to educate themselves. Uh, you, you will not and you cannot be effective in the fight for freedom if you're not educated. And, and a third thing is to join with others and get involved in being part of the solution. And of course, we're here at the headquarters of the John Birch Society. Uh, the JBS is uh, probably the most effective grassroots organization in terms of exposing and educating the American people and exposing the evil agendas that are at work here. And that's critical. It, you know, as long as people are scared of the wrong things like mm-hmm. COVID or whatever, they're not going to recognize the true problem and the true solution. So stop being scared of the stuff that the propaganda masters want you to be scared of and start paying attention and then get involved. Educate yourself, educate your community. And, um, you know, it seems like there's it. a lot of distractions out there, you know, uh, things happening here and there. And to not be aware of this, uh, it seems like it would be part of, of the plan. To, to keep you uh, misinformed, ignorant, and, and then you just kind of go along uh, because, like you said, you're, you're feared into. It. Right now, there's a, there's a saga, for instance, Joe Rogan, uh, and it seems like they're trying to keep pushing on him uh, because he had an approved speech on his shows, uh, and that seems to be par for the course for how this thing goes. Uh, there, there's a strong machine to, to shut us up, to keep us dumb, and to um, 
to push this all to push their agenda through right there's no question about it and and the, the fake media is a key component of that and, and I would say the the public education system is the key component right. because we would not be susceptible to the clownish manipulations that the media is using if we had been properly educated if we had been taught to reason and to think properly it just all of this propaganda would just you know like water on a duck's back it just flow right off it wouldn't even phase us um, and and you know third thing I think is just getting connected with other people. One of their most valuable assets is convincing people that they're alone, that it's only mm-hmm. like, it's just you and your wife who understand yeah. that everything is lies. Uh, and that's not true. If you talk to your neighbors, if you talk to the regular people in your community, you'll find very quickly, not only are you not alone, you're probably the, majority. the majority. And and that's what we need to do. We need to get out of our houses. We need mm-hmm. to stop buying this narrative that it's just, you're the extremist. No, we're not the extremist. We're, we're the mainstream. We're the normal people who see clearly through the lies. And once we get together and talk to each other about it, uh, their propaganda just melts away. It's clear there is a an agenda to keep us isolated. Uh, Dr. Malone talked about mass formation psychosis, and I think uh, he it wasn't his theory. It was, I, I think Matthias it was, Desmet. Yeah, and one of the key components of it is isolation. Uh, and now, you know, you go on Facebook, and what do you, are you seeing all the, well, have you been kicked off completely? <laughs> I did get kicked off, and then the little fascist brought me back without explaining uh, yeah. why. So. <laughs> but th- have you noticed all the, the VR, the meta ads? Yep. Uh, so they, they want to move you. It seems like there is the, the, the culture in some way is in this, is moving in this direction where it's cutting off that connection with humanity. And like you said, it's so, so important that we have that connection because, if, first of all, it would help you realize, I think that with COVID, that was a great example where we are all like, maybe a lot of people didn't know that they're the only ones who apparently had this thirst for freedom and they thought that the rules were stupid. With the truckers convoy in Canada, they have you seen, like they, they would play a lot of those videos or audio of the kids, like some of them were like crying, like, thank you for standing up over and over and over and all these people aligned on the highways. And what does it tell you? What it told you is that these people were all cowered for all these years into hiding and they probably thought they were alone. And then these truckers come through and they're like, oh my God, thank God, we're not alone. Someone's speaking for us. All that to say is that you travel a lot and you you, you had mentioned that the major- we're probably in the majority I think you're right, man. I think you're right. You travel more than me. Well, let's finish with that thought. Are we in the majority or is is the truth uh, willing, able to win? And are we in the majority? I think we're clearly in the majority on a lot of issues. Now, people may not have the in-depth understanding that comes from years of reading uh, good books and things like that, but they they sense that they're being lied to. Uh, And and we even see this in the establishment's polling data. The majority of Americans now think the 2020 election was rigged, despite endless nonstop propaganda that that's the big line. Anybody who believes that is a racist, white supremacist, fascist, uh, Nazi who wants to kill six million Jews. I mean, still most Americans recognize that. And I think if you look on issue after issue, um, Americans are relatively common sense people. Mm-hmm. And, and I firmly believe that uh, people who value freedom and people who recognize that the establishment is lying to us are in the majority, probably quite a significant majority. Alex, thank you so much, man. Thank you for, for coming on and discussing this vital topic. Thanks for having me, Paul. Great to be with you. Well, folks, isn't that something? Like Alex said, the truth is so important. So however you feel about this crazy plot, one way that you can never go wrong is by getting in the know and getting involved. So if you haven't already done so, uh, subscribe to The New American at thenewamerican.com. You can find lots of Alex's videos there. Uh, He has done some great reporting on this, and you can learn about other crazy agendas and things that you're not supposed to know about. And then get involved one way or another. We suggest that the best way to do that is with the John Birch Society. You can learn more about what we do and how to get plugged in at JBS.org. And remember, whatever ails society, freedom is the cure.